this video we're going to look at quadratic graphs and we're going to look at how completing the square can help us find the turning point of those quadratic graphs and how to you know how it can help us to sketch the quadratic graphs also um, it's a great approach to be able to, to find those turning points as an alternative to topical calculus which you generally look at in a level maths so there's two videos that you would need to watch before you watch this video and that's video 10 in corporate maths on completing the square and video 323 in corporate maths on transformations of graphs I'm going to take it that you know those two topics pretty well throughout this explanation okay so um, here we've got the graph of y equals x squared and as you know with the graph of y equals x squared it's a parabola or you might have called it a u-shaped graph uh, but it's a parabola and it goes through the point zero zero or the origin because obviously zero squared is zero and one squared is one two squared is four and so on so it has that sort of you know steep um, sort of sides to that parabola okay so that's the graph y equals x squared now if you've watched the, uh, the transformations of graphs video you'll know that if you have um, if you consider if you let that equal y equals f of x that x squared graph if you put, um, add a number to that x inside of the brackets it will move the graph a squares to the left okay so in other words if this was if this graph here is y, uh, y equals f of x, the graph of y uh, equals f of bracket x plus two would be the same graph but shifted or translated two squares to the left. So the instead of having a turning point at the origin, it would have a turning point at the point uh, minus two zero. So that's um, that's going to be very useful in this topic. And um, if it was a minus, so if it was uh, y equals f bracket x minus a, it moves the translates the graph a squares to the right. Um, it's sort of counterintuitive, I always say to my students. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is we're also going to consider what happens when you add outside of the brackets. In other words, y equals f of x plus a, where the a is outside of the brackets. Well, that moves the graph or translates the graph a squares upwards. Okay. So if it was uh, y equals f of x plus three. Oh, Get rid of that bracket, uh, plus three, it would move the graph three squares upwards. So instead of it having a turning point at the origin, the graph would have a turning point at the coordinate zero, three. Okay, so those two transformations are very important for this topic. It's they're going to be very helpful for this topic. Okay, so let's take a look, uh, take a look at a typical question. So, uh, the first part, part A, says write x squared plus 4x plus 7 in the form bracket x plus a close bracket squared plus b. In other words, we have to do completing the square on this. So from completing the square, you should remember that that would be x plus 2, half of this number, in brackets, squared. You're going to take away this number squared, so 2 squared is 4, so you're going to write minus 4, and then we'll put the plus 7 on the end. Again, if you've watched video 10 in corporate maths, that will make sense. Um, let's simplify that as that would be x plus two, close bracket squared, and then minus uh, four plus seven is plus three. Um, so that's it written in that form. Now we're gonna use this completing the square form for part B. Part B says uh, sketch the graph of y equals x squared plus four x plus seven. So as you know, it's gonna be a quadratic graph. It's gonna have, a, it's gonna be a parabola. Okay, and it's going to go through the origin. So the graph will look something like that. Okay, but that would be the graph y equals x squared. Now, as you can see, we've got a plus two inside of the bracket. So that's going to move the graph two squares to the left. And then we've got a three outside of the bracket. So that's going to move the graph three squares up. So what's going to happen is this parabola with the plus two, well, it's going to be translated two squares to the left. And then it's going to have the plus three. So it's going to move three squares up. So that's where the parabola would go. Okay. Um, and then that would mean that this would be the graph. Y equals X squared plus four X plus seven. The turning point here, well, that's going to be the coordinate. Well, it was at the origin. It was moved two squares to the left. That's so going to be minus two and three squares up. So that'd be three. So the turning point of that parabola is minus two, three. Um, if you were asked to find or across the y-axis, just remember that you can put zero into it. So you're going to get, or you know, the x is zero. So you can substitute x equals zero in. So you get zero squared is zero plus four times zero, which is zero plus seven. So that would be the, the point there, zero, seven. Okay, um, so that's it. So using the completing the square, all you do is you look at the bracket, the number that you're adding, well, that would move it to the left that many squares. If it was a minus, it would move it to the right that many squares. Plus we have plus three, it moves the graph three squares up. Okay, let's have a look at another question. 
So the question says, use completing the square to find the coordinates of the turning point of the graph y equals x squared minus 8x plus 1. So first of all, let's use completing the square. So we're going to do x and then half of this minus 8 would be minus 4 close brackets squared. We're then going to take away whatever this number is squared. So minus 4 squared is 16. So minus 16. And then you put the number here on the end. So plus 1. So we've got y equals bracket x minus 4 close bracket squared minus 16 plus 1. Well minus 16 plus 1 is minus 15. So that gives us y equals x minus 4 close bracket squared minus 15. So we've got it in the format that we want, okay? So considering the y equals x squared graph, remember that's the y equals x squared graph, we've got a minus four inside of the brackets. Okay, so that's gonna translate the graph four squares to the right this time. And then it's got minus 15. So it's gonna move 15 squares down. So it's gonna look something like that, okay? Um, so the question says, where's the coordinates of the turning point? So this is the turning point here. You know, okay, so it moved four squares to the right, so that's gonna be four. It moved 15 squares down, so minus 15, so the coordinate would be four minus 15. And that's it. So that's how you can find the turning point to quadratic graphs really e well, easily, straightforwardly, uh, by using completing the square and considering the transformation of the graph. Okay, let's have a look at a question where we're working backwards. In this question, we've been given the graph y equals x squared plus ax plus b. Um, so notice that it's just x squared and then you've got ax plus b. So we're trying to find this a and b in the question. And it's told us what the turning point is, So the, uh, the, where the turning point is. So the turning point is at the coordinates 5, 1. And it says find the uh, what a and b are. So what we're going to do is we're going to think what that would be in the format of using completing the square. So it'd be y equals and then brackets and then x with a squared and then we'll figure what goes where. So first of all, it's gone five squares to the right. Now considering transformations or transformations of graphs, if you want to translate a graph five squares to the right, you're going to want a minus five inside of the bracket. Okay, so that would move the graph five squares to the right. Now we want to move the graph one square up. So we want a plus one outside of here. Okay, so that would be the graph um, y equals bracket x minus 5 close bracket squared plus 1. Now what we're going to do is we're going to expand the brackets and add 1 and find, get it into this format. So y equals bracket x minus 5 bracket x minus 5. Remember when you square bracket you write out beside itself. We then expand those brackets x squared minus 5x minus 5x plus 25 because minus 5 times minus 5, and then your plus 1 on the end. So that'd be y equals x squared minus 10x plus 26. So we've been asked to find what a and b are. So a is equal to minus 10, and b is equal to 26. And that's it.